Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Philip, and thank you for everything that uh, you do for London as well. Folks, uh, CBI, it must be, I think, at least uh, six years since I last had the, the pleasure of addressing the, the CBI in all, its, in all its glory, and it was uh, a long time ago, actually, and I, I think it was in Birmingham from, from, from memory. Does anybody remember this, this, this historic <laughs> occasion? Are there any veterans of that, of that, of that summit? Uh, because I made a speech then, I'm going to test you on it, because I made a speech then about my political hero, and I, I revealed the identity of my political hero on that occasion, and I wonder if you can guess who it was. That's right. Thank you so much. Well done. It just, it, my words weren't, weren't, weren't completely wasted. I made a speech. My, my political hero was, the, the, and I explained it was the mayor in Jaws because he was a wonderful guy. And uh, what, what he did was he, he, in, he, he defied the appeals for more regulation. At a time of crisis, he obstinately decided that he was going to keep the beaches open, if you remember. And I don't know how his political career developed after uh, that, that, uh, that decision. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I stuck up for him because I, well, the point I made then and, and I, and it was that very, very simple, which was that leaving aside the needs of art, the book, the film, in real life, knowing what we know about the habits of, of fish, of sharks in, in cold water at that part of America, that time of year, it was completely logical and rational of the mayor in Jaws to decide to protect the interests of the business community of Amity Island and keep people coming, wasn't it? And, he, and so logically, leaving aside the film, in real life, he, he did completely the right thing. And that was the point I made uh, to you all those years ago. And <laughs> I have to say, it went over big. It went over big. It, 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 was, it was a very, very popular uh, uh, analysis. And uh, it may be. It may be that future economic historians uh, will, will, will look at that speech and decide that was the moment uh, when otherwise sane and rational business people and investors uh, decided that there was no end to the bull market <laughs> and uh, that they could go on uh, taking risks of all kinds and the laws of gravity had been suspended, that it was sensible to keep lending money or borrowing money uh, forever and ever despite uh, people's inability to to repay. And uh, if, that is, if that is true, and if my speech then to you at the CBI was the butterfly's wings uh, that led to the, the flap of the butterfly's wings that would lead eventually to the credit crunch and, and the current disaster uh, and the, the, the current difficulties, then of course I apologize. Uh, but, but, members of the CBI, I do not regret a single word. I don't regret a single word, and I stick by everything I, I said. Because the truth is that uh, what this economy needs now is not more regulation and not more high taxes or a greater aversion to risk, in my view. It doesn't. That's not what we need. That's not what we need. Not when the banks aren't lending and people are drawing in their horns and they're not spending and companies aren't hiring young people and they're all sitting on their cash. That's not what we need right now. And in my view is what this country needs and what this city needs is confidence. We need to have confidence in our economy and in our ability to pull ourselves out of it. And my job tonight is just to remind you very, very simply why you're absolutely right to have confidence in London and uh, why this is the best place to live in and to invest in. And it's a city, I don't think I need to remind you, where crime is coming down over the last uh, three and a half years. To pick a period at random, it's down by 9.5%. <laughs> On the tube. The metro's R tube system is now the safest in Europe. TfL pointed it out to me as though, you know, some casual detail uh, the other day. Uh, I'm delighted to say, and that's a fantastic thing. That's something worth telling people in other European countries. We've got the safest tube system in Europe. Crime down on the underground, 20%. Crime down on buses, 30%. Uh, the murder rate is now the lowest level since 1978. That's very, very important for London, for our competitiveness. And I'm very proud of, of, of what we're doing. It's also, of course, and, and uh, Philip made this point very well earlier on, it's a city that's going through a neo-Victorian surge of investment in transport infrastructure. And it's incredibly important that we succeeded in persuading the Treasury last year not to do what some, of the, some people were advising them to do. Uh, and I'm grateful for the support of the CBI, which has been absolutely steadfast on this. It was vital that we got Crossrail a huge increase in rail capacity that will deliver for London. It's vital that we got the cash to deliver the tube upgrades, a 30% increase in the capacity of our underground system. And uh, yes, already, I know some of you use the Jubilee Line. Who uses the Jubilee Line? 
Well, it's getting better. All I can tell you, I'm sorry. I'm, it, is, it, is a, it is at last starting to thank you, Victor. Uh, this is the guy you really want to be, you really want to take your, your complaints to. Uh, the, the, <laughs> He is, uh, and we've we've had we've had some lively phone conversations. Uh, the, the the Jubilee line at last is starting to work in the sense that the transmission-based train control system is delivering 27 trains per hour. We will go up to 30 trains uh, per hour uh, next year. Uh, that is, you know, roughly one every. Thank you. One every no. <laughs> no flies on the CBI. I mean, basic mathematics are not beyond you. Uh, and and that, is, that is an important thing for the city. And, and we have a great calling card as London business. We have the greatest calling card to show around the world. We are going to be delivering on time and under budget the greatest Olympic Games that has ever been held. And I think that is a fantastic thing. If you look at what's happening in the Olympic Park, where you've got these incredible structures sprouting already, or they've sprouted, they're, not, they're there. And as I, as I never tire of saying, the smart thing to do would be to hold a snap Olympics, catch the world napping, and, and, hoover, and hoover up. <laughs> Hoover up the medals, uh, but that is that is the greatest. That is the great. In my view, that is the greatest. That is the greatest symbol and tribute of what British business can do, and I am proud of it. And we should be talking about it. We should be talking it up across the world, and of course, in countless ways, we are. We in City Hall are working to make lives more agreeable, more comfortable for everybody in London. And I use the slogan, which I borrowed uh, shamelessly from Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, the idea I've got is that we're putting the village back into the city. And in all sorts of ways, we're trying to create a, uh, a, an atmosphere that is uh, village-like in, 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 in every aspect. So I might, it might be planting thousands of trees, which we've done over the last uh, three and a half years, again, this period of time around, 50,000 trees. Uh, it might be having more zero carbon vehicles. It might be upgrading people's parks, uh, all sorts of things. It might be encouraging people to come out and, and get together for fates or street parties, which I think is an important way to bind communities together. All the evidence is where people know each other by their first names, they are less likely to, make, to commit crime. You put the village back into the city that way. And uh, I'd also mention, of course, this uh, bicycle scheme that you will have seen uh, in, the center, in the center of London. I'm very, very proud of it. It is working uh, surprisingly well. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's extremely popular. You see lots of people who patently shouldn't be allowed to ride a bicycle <laughs> sailing, sailing, wobbling, wobbling past. And if that isn't putting the village back into the city, I don't know what is, ladies and gentlemen. And, I'm, I'm proud of that scheme, and the, 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 most, the most encouraging statistic that I, I derive from it is, of course, that in, uh, it must be more than a year now of, of solid operation, it's only had, we've only had 18 bikes nicked, and, uh, and uh, I, I, com I contrast that to a rival European uh, jurisdiction, where over the, over the course of a similar period, they have a very similar bike scheme. I have to admit, we did slightly borrow the idea. Uh, but over, over, over an identical period, they had 2,000 bicycles uh, stolen. And what does that tell you about, about the difference between us and, and well, it is Paris. Uh, <laughs> it, tells you, it tells you that London is a city where, where there's a village. I, look, I'm the mayor, and I'm allowed to take this view of human nature. I think it shows that people respect Property, property. I mean, let me tell you, during the riots, the August riots, the one thing, I mean, in addition to antiquarian books, the safest thing in London uh, was, was a Barclays bike. Uh, <laughs> We, we, I, I, don't know, I don't know whether to be, I don't know whether to be insulted or, or, or flattered by it. Uh, but that is the truth. We had not one single hire bike, not one single hire bike was stolen. And I think, and I'm entitled to take this view because I'm the mayor, it's because people understand that they're public property, that they're part of improving the lives of everybody, and they're part of, of what I mean by putting the village back into the city. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. And, and that is, those are some of the things that were. We're working on, in addition to all the, all the, the, the things you'd ex expect me to, to mention, you know, putting your, your oyster cards on the overground rail and freezing your council tax and making your automatics, making so you pay the congestion charge automatically. Do you do that now? You pay, it's fantastic. All these wonderful things that we've done. But there are lots of things that I think, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to end by, by saying some of the things I think we need to get right. And there are some areas where I think London needs to focus and we as a country need to to focus, and it won't be any surprise to you uh, to hear me say that I think we can't continue indefinitely with a top rate of tax that is significantly higher than France and Germany, than Italy, than America, than Switzerland, than Japan, just about all our major competitors. And I don't think that is uh, right in the long term, the, the medium term for this country, and my strong advice to the Treasury would be to get rid of it 
and see what happens to the revenues. Uh, because I think they'd be pleasantly surprised. And I think the second thing uh, that uh, I'd mention is that we can't, and we've just been having this conversation here at this table, we can't go on endlessly trying to cram a court into a pint pot at Heathrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you agree, agree with that. I, we, we, this, is a, this is a great city with a fant fantastic uh, uh, natural uh, economy. It is crazy that at a time when 30% uh, of our goods are now being exported by air, I think 75% of pharmaceuticals, high value pharmaceuticals now go by air, the, the, the proportion is increasing, that we are constraining our capacity uh, to export and to send our most uh, precious export, obviously human beings, uh, to the growth economies of, uh, of Asia. And we are losing competitiveness in that way to uh, Schiphol, to Frankfurt, and uh, to Paris, and indeed to Madrid and other airports. And in my view, uh, it would be reasonable for the government uh, to say that they could entrench, this is what they should do in my view, they, we could entrench our position. London's position as the leading city in Europe for the next 50 years if we decided that we were now going to consult on the construction of a new hub airport uh, for London. I don't, I, I don't care where it is. Uh, I, I have no particular preference. But in my view, that would not only drive jobs and growth in the economy, it would be a fantastic vote of confidence in this city and in this country. And that's why I commend that policy. But there's a final thing that uh, I don't think we can do uh, we can afford to uh, neglect, and that is young people in this city. And we cannot consign our young people to a life on the dole. We've got ever-growing ever numbers of people who don't get the jobs that they need. And so I say to you tonight that it's time for all of us who care about London, about its future, business, politicians, uh, to do what you can. And I urge as many of you as possible, I know a lot of you already do it, but I urge as many of you as possible to take on apprentices. And I mean work placements, interns of all kinds. Because when the upturn comes, and it will come, they, those people will be far better able to compete. And our city will be far better able to compete for having given them, now in the downturn, the self-confidence and the survival skills that go with being in a place of work rather than having the drain of self-esteem that comes with being on the dole. And uh, Peter Rogers, Sir Peter Rogers is here. Uh, if you want to uh, get involved in the apprenticeship scheme, if you, if, if, if you think that you might uh, want to sign up to the, the scheme that we support, Peter Rogers is here to, to help. I also think it's time for us to go into overdrive with uh, a scheme that uh, I, they're doing very, very well, in my view, in Germany, where Angela Merkel has uh, engendered what's called the Beschäftigungswunder. Are you familiar with the Beschäftigung? I hope I pronounced that correctly. Have I, have I even got the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Beschäftigungswunder. And it, it, what it is, it's the small employment miracle. The small employment miracle which they've generated in Germany. And we need to do it in this country. I'm absolutely convinced of it. What they've done, they've stimulated a massive employment uh, creation amongst young people by the simple task of retrofitting, retrofitting people's homes and retrofitting buildings of all kinds in order to reduce uh, the CO2 output in order to save on energy bills as well. And my challenge to, to London's landlords and that public, private, residential, commercial landlords is to help us in London to launch the biggest ever retrofitting program. And I think landlords uh, should recognize that this is in their interests because of the huge energy savings that they will derive over time. And, uh, and the cost savings that will follow. And of course, it is a massive potential generator of employment for young people. And the, the final decisive point is surely that it is, this is an economic model that will deliver a strong return for banks and for the pension funds that should be funding it. And I intend to get it going in London, and I certainly would welcome support from people in this room. And let me say that whatever they say about Britain, that you know, they, say, well, they often say that we're, we're lagging in this or that, don't they? They say we're lagging behind. Well, I tell you, one thing in which we're not going to be lagging in London is lagging, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that is, and that, is the, that, is the that is one of the objectives of the, of the scheme. But I mean, it, I, mean it, I mean it quite seriously. I mean it quite seriously. At a time like this, when youth unemployment is going up so sharply, when so many people and so many young people, uh, we face the possibility of a wasted generation, you cannot just sit back. 
We need to be investing in infrastructure to drive jobs and growth now and make London more competitive in the future. And we need a massive push, in my view, on uh, youth unemployment. And uh, I believe that retrofitting is, is the way forward. Folks, London is the natural economic capital of Europe, isn't it? Why, uh, the world, I would say. I don't know why you just settled the Europe. You missed your cue there, folks. It's, I, I think it's, it is the, it's the greatest city on earth. We've got so much going for us. We've got the time zone, we've got the language, we've got a young, dynamic, skilled population, and so many advantages, that, some of which I've, I've talked about tonight. We've got the most green space of any European capital. And we've got a fantastically diverse and resilient London business community with incredible fertility of ideas, incredible dynamism in what you export. Do you know that? Now, let me tell you, I discovered the other day, we export tea, tea bags. Tea bags go from the London borough of Sutton. Guess where? Guess where we export tea from Sutton? In China, correct Mundo. We export tea from Sutton to China. We export bicycles. You know this already. We export bicycles in ever-growing numbers from where? Chiswick, yeah, to London, to Holland, yeah. We exported bicycles to Holland and indeed, and indeed uh, Japan. We export TV aerials. This is what really blew me away. We export TV aerials from Wandsworth to guess where? Korea. <laughs> uh, what a city. And we, as I never tire of telling, we export cake in ever growing quantities to France. Uh, <laughs> fabrique, fabrique en, en forêt de Waltham. Uh, and, and why, and, and, and well, those London businesses, and those, you know, they may make better wine. They may make, they may, okay, the, the, the French may grow better wine. Okay, should we give them that? But where's the wine futures market? <laughs> exactly. And who invented wine futures? We did. And all those, all those ideas, all those brilliant, brilliant export opportunities arose because someone, like the people around the room, saw the potential and someone had the wisdom to finance it and give that business the capital to expand. And that is finally why I will always stick up for a strong financial services industry in London. And that's why dynamic uh, London businesses such as yourselves will always have the support of us in City Hall, as long as I'm Mayor of London. Because the sewers we, we build and the Thames Tideway Tunnel, the trains we travel in, the drugs that we... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the drugs that will cure our children. The drugs that will cure, and indeed, and indeed cure our children of, of, of shark bite or whatever uh, we inflict on them. All those things are financed, are financed and made possible thanks to the tax generated by the energy of the business in this room and of your employees. So thank you very, very much for everything that you do and have a great evening. Thank you.